So here I am, an unconfident trans sailor, trying to get approval to transition from a guy who has no reason to care via an illogical system. In August, I submit my paperwork to my supervisor, Chief Quinn, a 30-year-old Caucasian man, head shaved bald with a tad of a southern twang to him. I wait and wait and wait. I get nothing back from him besides, we are making progress. Well, they are still looking it over and it's still ongoing for about two months. There's a lot to transition, but my immediate concern is to start with hormones to get some sort of relief. Every day they don't approve my transition is an addition of despair, as if I am drowning a foot below the surface of a river, unable to rise to the surface. In October, I reach my limit. It's as if I exhaled a breath and am unable to inhale. I go into town and start hormones with a civilian doctor. I can't. I won't let the Navy stop me from being myself anymore. In December, Chief Quinn hands me the paperwork to start hormones. Devilish grin shows on my face if I've, as I've been doing them for two months already. The next objective is my gender marker change, which will let me follow the female dress code and rules. Sitting in the barber chair, having my hair cut to male regs brings tears to my eyes, mourning the loss of hair as it is my family. I think about all the times I was forced to get my hair cut as a child, wondering if I would have known I was trans sooner if I could have been allowed to grow my hair. If I get the gender marker changed, I could finally lengthen into luxurious locks. In February, our Command Master Chief, CMC, comes in to talk to my work center. She is the local leader for us enlisted folk. I am full with resentment, as she is someone in the power structure which I am resentful towards overall. We are waiting for an old shed-like building. We sit in chairs made for third graders, type with a little desk attached. The blue, painted, the blue painted walls running to the linoleum floor, surprisingly hiding the age of the building we are in. She talks to us and says some stuff surprisingly relevant to me like, my office doors are always open if you're having a problem with the command and come to me if you feel you aren't being heard. I could swear she took a quick glance at me when she said that. All I could think during her saying these things of how full of shit she was. If she and the chain of command cared, my paperwork wouldn't be still sitting on someone's desk six months after I submitted it for approval. Immediately after this meeting, I sat in my car crying, vape smoke in the air, as I ponder in the silence of the parking lot. She did sound like she cared at some level but my fears of skipping over my supervisor's authority made my chest tighten at the thoughts of going to her office. After 20 minutes of going back and forth with myself, I came to the conclusion I had two choices. Continue my passiveness, which was getting me nowhere, or do like I did with the hormones and fight for what I wanted. No, what I needed. So I left my car to head up to Master Chief's office, my car softly beeping as the doors locked with the determination of an alligator locking its jaws on its prey. My hands were shaking, my breath short, as I walked into the building to speak with her. I was welcomed into her office. It was fairly decent considering we were in a hangar built during the Korean War. Fairly small but carpeted with a view of the airfield and a large l desk between us. She said in a relaxed tone, I'm glad you came to speak with me. I had you in my mind during my talk earlier. I sat straight in my chair, stiff as a plank. I summarized what the paperwork was and went over the regulations guiding to the best of my ability. My stomach in knots due to speaking with such a high-ranking person in their office. She sat almost motionless with a stone face and told me, I have spoken with the CO on an issue and with you possibly leaving in five months or so, he doesn't want to approve it. He wants your next CEO to do so as he doesn't want to step on their toes. To me, this doesn't make any sense. Every CO in the history of the armed service has done paperwork for service members knowing they had a new CO someday. I am at my wit's end. I stand my ground and reply, if he doesn't approve this, I will transfer under orders for a male slot in the ship. I'm already grown breasts, wearing feminine clothes, doing feminine things, tears in my eyes, my th throat tightening, making it hard to speak. It will be painful for me to be in male birthing for this. 
Her eyes soften, her brow unfurls, and her shoulders relax. Okay, I see. I didn't understand. I'll speak to the CEO and give you a chance to speak with him. So she helped set up a time for me to speak with the CEO. I had a pre-written list of reasons to approve my gender marker change, from the birthing issue to the fact that passing the buck will ultimately cause more work for my next CEO, who had better things to do than handle my paperwork. He's a thin but fit man in his 40s, full head of gray hair, his office being much larger than CMC's, with a couch and conference room table behind me as I sit in front of his desk. He sat in his large leather chair on the opposite side of his wooden desk and told me, that makes sense. I'll have the admin officer revise your paperwork and get it to me. My heart rose. I couldn't help but get excited at the thought that the end was in sight. They were actually going to treat this seriously. Unprompted, he makes sure to add, I don't have anything against trans people. I just go off the policy. When the previous administration allowed it, I said, okay. When this one got rid of it, it's the same. I don't care for the politics, just completing the mission. That should have been a red flag, but I was oblivious. After delays left and right with information and corrections needed by the admin officer, I was feeling like I was starting to be held over a cliff yet again. Literally all I needed was this stupid piece of paper signed so I could be me, and somehow it seemed like an impossible task. At some points, I considered forging a signature and sending the paperwork off. After about two months of the paperwork games they were playing, I went to see Master Chief again. She sat straight in her chair, brow furrowed, but with a regretful eyes, she softly spoke. We are looking over the guidelines, and you need to be at least a year on HRT before the CO can approve, so the CO won't sign it. My heart sinks. My fingers go numb as I pull out my phone to look at the guidelines to find out what she's talking about. The only ones I find are the ones I gave her in the packet, saying I'm eligible. We're at an impasse. She keeps reiterating that she and the CO saw something that said it had to be a year, and I keep countering with the actual policies and procedures which showed they were full of shit. She ponders for a bit and asks me to return the next day. She doesn't even ask me to sit when I come back. She leans forward in her chair. Looking at me, she says, regardless of the policy stating or allowed, the CO has decided he will not be signing off on your gender marker change. I wish you luck with your next CO. So I walk to my car, a fiery feeling in my shoulders, chest, chest and shoulders. I want vengeance. I think over all my options and what I can do. The anger in the past has led me to get in trouble for kicking office chairs. I take some deep breaths and try and focus on useful actions. Then I remember before Trump's transgender ban, there was a little office made in DC to help trans service members. It was still there for those of us who are, were already in the process before the ban went into effect. So I sent them an email asking for help. No, this was my last shot. A lieutenant responded and said he would help, asking for all the info and paperwork I had done and gone through so far. A few days later, Master Chief runs into me in the hangar and lets me know DC was asking for info and asked me for some clerical, clerical stuff. She was professional in her verbiage, but she was speaking in a little bit of a higher tone than normal and ending her sentences in a more open tone, as if leaving me an opportunity to explain why an office from DC was, now, was interested in my case now. I refused to latch onto the bait. I can't help but deviously smirk at the idea of the CEO having to de get and deal with calls from DC over my case. A couple of weeks of correspondence later, and I got the word, I would be seeing the CEO again. I went up to the CEO's office, forcing the smile off my face, praying that things are going to go my way. I sit across from the CEO, his desk between us, Master Chief on my left, my Chief, Chief Quinn staying behind me. He leans back in his chair, mouth the other off to the side, pondering. He speaks a little slower than usual, so I'm going to approve this, but I know you still have surgeries to come below the waist, so when you are changing the locker rooms or using the bathrooms, don't be flaunting or trying to show off your parts or causing any issues, okay? My cheeks are red as a shiver goes through my body, the thought of doing any of that, but my arms were electric. My heart and my throat from the thought the piece of paper I've been waiting for months on being within my grasp. Yes, I said. There are no plans for any of that. 
I'm already going to feel awkward, so that's not something I want to do at all. Not even realizing how transphobic he was being, as I doubt he ever told a cis woman not to show off in locker rooms. Then he handed me the paperwork. Any questions, he asked. I was busy trying not to jump for joy. Thank you, sir. I couldn't help but skip across the hangar bay in excitement. I immediately made 20 copies of it and stored them in different spots. My car, my locker, my work folders, and such. So it would take a gargantuan effort to lose them. The wait was over. So I could grow my hair out, wear earrings, and not suppress the true me anymore. I tell my coworkers who knew my secret about my success. And they start playing in an office party to celebrate for me to come out of the closet to everyone. <laughs>